The Ukrainian authorities say about 30 percent of the country is contaminated by Russian landmines, unexploded ordnance, and other explosives. Up to 174,000 square kilometers of land are thought to be contaminated, posing a threat to civilian life and making it off limits for farming and other uses. According to a survey by UN OCHA published last year, mines have been detected in 11 of Ukraine's 27 oblasts. Among the most contaminated regions are Mykolaiv, Kherson, Donetsk and Kharkiv. Human Rights Watch points out that Ukrainian forces have also deployed landmines against Russian forces. Now, the area in need of checking and clearing is larger than the size of Greece. DW's Eya Ibrahim traveled to Budi in northern Ukraine to meet some of those taking on this dangerous job. A year ago, Victoria was training to be a pastry chef. Now the 20-year-old is helping clear Ukrainian soil from unexploded Russian mines. She's doing so in a northern Ukrainian village previously occupied by Russia. This work is crucial for life to come back here. My brother is currently serving in the army for two and a half years already. My father was also called to the army. He passed the commission, but was not drafted. I also wanted to do my part, so I came to work here. I have a younger brother, and I would like him to walk on clean land. And so would my future children. Victoria says when she first swapped her pastry apron for a metal detector, her mother panicked, insisting the job was too dangerous and not appropriate for women. But women are taking on new roles all through Ukraine to replace men who are at the front lines. The Halo Trust, an NGO that works to clear landmines and explosive devices, is seeing more women wanting to do the job. During my work, I meet a lot of our women and uh, actually they inspire me because uh, many of them like um, went out of zone of comfort because uh, they did uh, previously absolutely different uh, walks of life. For example, some was working making manicures, some was, was doctor anesthesiologist, someone was working as a teacher. And uh, now they decided that at the moment, maybe we need to clean first the land. Not far from Kiev, Yulia, who used to work in an office, trains new deminers. I'm just delighted when they come the next day and can tell them what I told them yesterday. That's why I like being an instructor. We have many women whose husbands are at war, and these women are not standing by and crying, not waiting for them. Rather, they also take the position that the more we work on this, the sooner we will finish it all. Some estimates suggest it could take hundreds of years to clear all of Ukraine of landmines. These women are making a start. For more, I'd like to welcome Oleksandr Lobov, a mine action specialist with the United Nations Development Program in Ukraine. He joins us now from Kiev. Mr. Lobov, you, you have worked as a mine action expert around the world, including in Afghanistan and Somalia. How does Ukraine compare to what you have experienced elsewhere? I de definitely, uh, Ukraine has a different context, especially during this conflict being used already modern ammunition, uh, such as uh, ballistic missiles, aircraft, bro bombs, landmines which, with anti-handling devices, which are very sensitive to any physical influence that, will requ that requires special knowledge and experience just to disarm them. Also for Ukraine, also one of the challenges is just, just to understand the scope and scale of this problem. Definitely it will require a lot of resources. And definitely this kind of area, it's extremely expensive area. And at the moment require a lot of funds and investments just to do uh, this, to, to conduct this kind of activities. Now paint us a Besides, picture if you can. Uh, can you tell us how these landmines are changing daily life for Ukrainians? No, every day just pose people just uh, stress. So people under stress of these mines every day just has a serious impact on their just basic needs, humanitarian needs. They don't have access just 
simple things like hospitals, schools, they cannot conduct household activities on a daily basis, limited access to infrastructure, infrastructure, etc., etc. There are approximately 6 million people still at, at the threat in these regions. And what kind of long-term effects do you expect to see uh, from mining in Ukraine? For example, how long after the war is over do you think this will continue to be a problem haunting the country? Uh, just taking in, in, in consideration this large scale of problem, I want to say definitely it takes years and definitely it will require kind of new technologies and innovation applications for this one. Previous experience that been brought to Ukraine from international uh, from international society definitely not enough at the moment. We fully rely already on new technologies. And are, uh, are certain groups of people? I'm sorry for interrupting. There are certain groups of people in Ukraine, uh, for example, children, particularly vulnerable to the impact of mines. Yes, sure. People just, according just to um, uh, United Nations High Commission for Human Rights. Uh, civil casualties more than 100, uh, 1,100 casualties among children, more than 120 ch children just since 2022. And those are it's staggering numbers. Pattern. Yeah, in addition to those, uh, those horrible numbers, there's also an, an economic impact in Ukraine as well, isn't there? Uh, agriculture, I understand, is important to the Ukrainian economy. How much has that been impacted now that you see fields littered with mines? Yes, definitely. Just Ukrainians the biggest product production of the agricultures, um, and definitely it has a significant impact on economical impact. It's a lot of restriction just to get access to the area. The war is still in active phase, and, def and definitely there is no access uh, to conduct emergency response demanding task. So it has a sig significant impact, and definitely it's one of priority just to restore our economical and especially for agricultural sector. Well, thank you so much for your time today on DW News. That is Mine Action Specialist Alexander Lobov with the UN Development Program in Ukraine. And we can now cross over to Yulia Osmolovska. She's the head of the Kyiv office of the security think tank Globsec. Welcome to the program. Now, 30% of Ukraine affected by explosive ordnance left by Russian troops. How does that impact the daily lives of Ukrainians in the affected areas? Yes, it definitely uh, affects the life. Uh, so according to estimates, it's uh, roughly about 6 million of uh, Ukrainians affected uh, uh, by contaminated land. And second problem is that uh, despite uh, the active actions of the government and the NGOs that do enlightening work in explaining all this explosive risk, uh, um, uh, a lot of people still remain ignorant to that. Therefore, we have high level of casualties. Last year, for instance, we had over 600 cases which amounts for roughly 80 people per month. And the government wants, uh, warns that uh, if no proper uh, actions are taken in terms of uh, uh, this um, uh, explanatory work, uh, both for children and the older population, so uh, the amount of incidents could reach to 9,000 by 2030. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you make of initiatives like the one we saw in that report just now, training people to become deminers themselves? Yes, it's uh, it's very good, and we actually uh, uh, indicated this in our two reports that we made on the mining in Ukraine. Um, and especially, we do confirm that there is a rising number of women for the women for the same reason that you put in in your coverage. Uh, at the same time, the problem remains uh, that uh, uh, regardless how many people you train, you have to equip all of them with personal protection kits and with the mining equipment. And this is something which Ukraine is actually uh, has a shortage at the moment. So this is where the assistance of international uh, partners are very much welcomed. Mm -hmm. Now, aside uh, of the, the points that you just mentioned, what would you say are the main challenges in demining a country that is, of course, also actively at war? Yeah, uh, so the challenges are plenty, uh, starting with that we still have unfinished war, definitely, and we don't know the exact figure of uh, how much of the land will be contaminated 
calculated in the end. Uh, still, 18% uh, of the territory is under occupation, and uh, out of uh, 156,000 of uh, square kilometers which um, uh, are contaminated, only 45,000 square kilometers are available for survey. Uh, this is the main challenge. Then, as I mentioned, the equipment, lack of resources, even financial resources. For instance, estimates of World Bank that Ukraine might need uh, around uh, three billion of dollars annually. Still, for the two years of uh, uh, active engagement with the international community, we have received commitments and pledges for just 500 uh, um, uh, million of dollars uh, for that. So then, uh, it's another big problem is about different range of explosive devices. It's more than 180 of different times uh, types. A lot of them are improvised devices, which makes the worst of demining very, very dangerous and uh, um, uh, very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, the, the problem with aquatic demining, uh, because this is something where Ukraine didn't have uh, a lot of experience in, and around uh, 15, around 14,000 square kilometers are of uh, aqua resources that are contaminated. So plenty of other problems uh, uh, to do this, but these are probably the main ones. Yeah, I want to give our viewers a, a sense of, of the scale of this problem. How does the contamination in Ukraine compare to that in other war zones around the world? Well, uh, this year uh, in mine action review uh, uh, for, for the last year, uh, Ukraine was put in the highest contaminated category, uh, which amounts uh, uh, to, to, to the figure like uh, unknown, but, but, but massive. So obviously Ukraine is ranking one of the top or probably the top uh, when it comes to the level of contamination of the territory. And uh, however, the government tries to do a lot of efforts uh, to to reduce the potentially contaminated territory because i have to underline when we t when we say contaminated territory they should be uh, surveyed first and then uh, approved that uh, there are some explosive devices there so we need another challenges uh, to do non-technical survey as quick as possible to reduce the clear land and to see how actually uh, much of the land is still uh, contaminated and requires clearance yeah and educate the people about the dangers of mines. That was Yulia Osmoloska of Globesec. Thank you so much for your insights.